Hey guys, Kat Sikor, IFBB Pro and Super League Pro, and you're watching Muscle Sport TV. Sunday right here at the Arnold Expo, last day of a comeback show after two years off. Muscle Sport Media's production brought to you by OldSchoolLion.com, our title sponsor of the weekend. We are here at the Bio Lane booth with Holly and a man who needs no introduction, Lane Norton, who actually was a contributing writer for Muscle Sport Magazine, I believe back in 2010, Wayne, uh, Lane. Been, been, been a hot minute, yeah, been a hot minute. So... Yeah, so we're, we're really an education-based company, you know, trying to provide evidence-based solutions for people in fitness and bodybuilding. So today, we're only selling a portion of what we offer. We have our educational books, we have our supplement line, we have some of our apparel. We also got quite a few, we also got quite a few other things that we offer. Uh, for example, like our coaching team is here, so our team BioLane. So we do one-on-one -on -one coaching, high standard, which Holly is actually the one who we brought on to train our coaches, and she has been the one who's really taken the lead with Team BioLane. You want to talk a little bit about uh, the coaching? Sure, yeah. So I think um, uh, so I think to celebrate the, this event, I mean, it's been a couple of years now since uh, this event has happened here in uh, Columbus, Ohio, so we're doing a big coaching special this week. So. Uh, we have 30% discount across all of our uh, nutrition coaching. I'm actually getting back involved in some coaching as well, which hasn't happened for a little while. But yeah, we also have a uh, nutrition coaching app, uh, Carbon Diet Coach, which uh, we're currently servicing about 40,000 uh, subscribers, which has been phenomenal. So yeah, we do a lot of nutrition science. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it's great. It's been great to be back here, um, especially after the last couple of years. You know, not being able. To, it's just nice to see. Feels like things are getting back to normal. Um, so if you guys want any information, you can check us out at biolane.com and all the stuff we offer. And I uh, hope to see you out here next year. Here at ProFit New York, right here in Deer Park, with the owner, Alex Luca. Alex, thank you for your hospitality, first of all, I must say. Good having you. We're, you're part of the family here. Thank you. It's, I'm proud to be, and you're part of the MSM family as well, yourself and all the people here, especially Anthony and Steve. Um, we were here to do Anthony's cover launch party a year and a half or so ago. Uh, I haven't been here in a while. You've added a lot of new things. It looks pretty cool. It looked great last time, but you, it's even more after the whole COVID thing. Yes. So tell us a little bit about what's been going on with ProFit since that last time we were here. Well, COVID really was a restart for us. Um, we took that opportunity to really overhaul the entire gym because we were always open 24 seven, we never closed. So we took the opportunity 
because we were closed, not by choice, to move every single piece of equipment, make it just easier to get around, you know, keeping the six feet rule. Uh, we cleaned the ceilings. It took about two months. We redid all the lighting. We cleaned all the ducts. We did the MERV 13, and we just did so many upgrades that we could never do because we were always open. From uh, opening up Hummus Fit, which I'll show you, yeah. um, we also opened up a boxing gym. We redid uh, the bathrooms. We redid so many things to really make it such an experience for the members. So they, they're really happy with what we have accomplished. Yeah, I mean, you used a, a negative thing and turned it around to a positive right, thing with right. the shutdown and everything. Yeah, well, we, that's really all you could do in this situation. You know, it's either give up, which I wasn't prepared to do, no or <laughs> keep fighting and just make things better, which yeah. I think we were able to accomplish that. And uh, people are coming back and they're happy. and I'm happy. Um, so that's a little bit about, you know, where we were and where we're going now. Yeah. No, the place is dynamite. You have unbelievable equipment this is a bodybuilding gym but it's not an intimidating body there's a lot of ladies here I remember last time and even now when I was walking around a lot of women members what would you say the percentage is men to women as membership here give or take I would say it's probably 75% men yeah. and 25% women but a lot more women are coming and I think also because they see that I'm a, a women uh, owner yeah. And I'm a very hands-on owner, and I'm always around, and I'm, I'm trying to help women when I see them, and um, and they, they look up to me and say, "Oh, this is great," you know. Yeah. I feel I feel welcome here. Yeah. They don't feel like it's a man's gym, which yeah. it isn't. It's all fitness levels. We have every type of uh, person, you know, walk yeah. of life here. It's a very diverse crew, as you as you know, um, and I'm very grateful for that. You have everywhere from newbies to IFBB yeah, pros here, right? Everything. Everything in between, 85-year-olds, we have a silver sneakers program here. Um, you know, we have teenagers coming in with their parents. It's generational. Um, it's great to see, you know, the older members working out with their kids that are, you know, 18, yeah. 19 years old, and, and it's like a family experience. So we really created an experience here. It's not just a gym. One thing I'm very, very impressed about, you do a lot of charitable things. I know you had the dog drive, you had the car show and stuff just completely out of the realm of just the regular bodybuilding gym fitness world elaborate a little bit on that the other extra stuff that you do well I just I love giving back to the community I feel like you know paying it forward is so important uh, you can't keep it unless you give it away and that's always been my motto and we have the Special Olympics here they just actually came back a few weeks ago on Sundays um, so we get involved with a lot of Special Olympics the America's Vet Dogs. I'm getting involved with uh, Paws of War right now, um, Beyond the Badge, New York, and a whole host of things up and coming. I, I, uh, I'll let everybody know as soon as I have all the dates ironed out for some events that we have. It just feels good giving back. Um, this is like a real sense of community here. It's not really a gym per se. It's so much more. I think people that come here really enjoy spending time here and enjoying all the amenities and hanging out at the shake bar. And we are open 24-7 and somebody is always here. And uh, I think people feel cared about, especially after going through COVID. People want that sense of, you know, um, that somebody cares. Yeah. You know, we're not just a cookie cutter type of uh, business. Yeah. So. No, you're definitely not cookie cutter. And the uh, beyond the badge thing, being a retired cop, um, that's obviously yeah. something close to me. Uh, give us a little more about that. So um, the first event that we're going to be having with Beyond the Badge New York is uh, on July 10th. It's going to be a 5K run for them. Um, we're also getting uh, US CPA Region 7, the K9 unit. Um, we're going to be doing something with them also within that event. Um, so we literally have just started preliminary working on it. We just had our first meeting with the board and um, they've chose us to um, partner with to do the run is going to be our kickoff and then I think almost on a monthly basis or so we really want to bring in uh, first responders and um, that are coping with depression and you know suicide awareness and or mental health awareness and we're going to be doing a lot more events here with them that people. that's fantastic God, you know the, God bless you for doing that that's uh, it's a it's an excellent thing that you're doing um, I mean, obviously, like you just said, it's not just cops, it's whole first responders. So it's fully encompassing all of those people that do such great work that don't usually get the recognition that they deserve. But there's one thing that I'm afraid to ask you about because I know 
I know that my wife's going to want to come here is when you have the uh, dog adoption yeah, yeah. things because she's killing me to get another. We, we have one. We used to have three. Obviously, yeah. you know, things happen. And yeah. Tell us about how you do those, uh, those adoption uh, rescue things. Well, we just we love animals so much, and everybody loves animals. Um, so, you know, I've worked with America's Vet Dogs. This upcoming um, summer, I'm starting to work with Paws of War, which is another wonderful charity. Um, they're based in uh, Wisconsin, and they help service members um, and the military, uh, either placing dogs or uh, military personnel that's overseas, they're bringing dogs back that they find yeah. that are orphaned, and they're finding homes for them uh, through, you know, with first responders and veterans. And so we're gonna have some up and coming things. Like I said, I'm working on it now. It's early in the season, but uh, we have a couple things starting up uh, in May and June. And then we also have Vargas Boxing now. We've opened up, and we're USA certified um, boxing uh, gym. And we're going to be having our first um, amateur boxing oh, wow. fight. USA USA that. boxing sanction. We're going to have the whole the belts, and it's going to be a huge event. So stay tuned for that as well. That's super. We're going to be doing the tour with Alex. Of showing you the whole gym, so we'll check out the whole boxing area and all of that. Uh, any plans to incorporate MMA into that as well? Probably not. It's they are very different. They're yeah, you know, and we do have a full size regulation uh, ring, mm -hmm. and it, you can't just like kind of throw a cage in there too. No, to no, both, yeah. it, it, you know, a lot of MMA people come through, and they seem to have their roots in boxing. To believe it or not, yeah. a lot of these MMA guys. So. Um, they appreciate the sport of boxing and, you know, they, they hang out over there, too. Yeah. So it's all good. I'm just thinking maybe we can get Dan K9 Sion yeah. to come out of retirement. Yeah, he knows Mike Vargas. <laughs> he knows Coach Mike and stuff. He's already come through. I think he's starting back up with Anthony tomorrow. So he'll be over at the, the boxing gym as well. Very cool. Dan had some great matches when we were over at the... Uh, at the Mulcahy's okay, and yeah. saw his when he announced his retirement. Anything else you want to plug? Please plug the site, the, uh, the Instagram, anything else? Your own personal Instagram? No, I, I, I don't have time to work on my personal Instagram, but uh, <laughs> you can follow us on Instagram at pro underscore fit Deer Park. Um, we put all the latest goings on um, on that page. Uh, we've also taken a stab at uh, TikTok. We're getting pretty popular there, Pro Fit Gym. And um, I'll show you the tour, and you, I think it, the place speaks for itself. It absolutely does, and you're going to see for yourself when Alex and I do this tour coming up real soon. treadmill aka the dreadmill as I like to call it and there's also another machine upstairs that has the resistance bands and I like to do that kind of change up the routine a little bit but yeah this is my little home gym that I like to use so and oh by the way have you checked out the t-shirt my lovely little MSM t-shirt so thank, thank you Joe I appreciate it and I'll be wearing this more often over the next few weeks as I show you a little bit more about my, my workout and things that I like to do. So, 
next segment coming up, I believe is a little bit of time on the treadmill. And welcome to our week seven edition of USFL Extra Point, New Jersey Generals. The first team to clinch a postseason berth right here this year. And they defeat in the first game of the weekend last weekend. Tampa Bay 20 to 13. New Jersey goes out ahead, staves off a little bit of a pressure situation. 10 to 3 in the second half. Tampa Bay outscores them, but New Jersey able to hold on. To a 2013 win, Darius Victor, another big game, the, the powerful, thick uh, running back, fullback, whatever you want to call him. The guy just gets the job done. 72 yards on the ground and another rushing touchdown. He's having a phenomenal season. Luis Perez played well again. New Jersey punches their ticket for the big dance in Canton, Ohio, coming up at the end of the regular season. And in the second contest of the weekend, we get our first taste of overtime in the new USFL. Michigan Panthers and New Orleans Breakers. This was a good one. Uh, new Orleans has been a very, very hot team. Michigan has had some tough luck. They've played well, but they haven't, uh, you know, the wins and losses don't show it. They actually came back and took a late lead in this game, uh, took a lead in the, in the fourth quarter. But at the end of the uh, one second left on the clock, New Orleans ties it up with a field goal, 27-27, and then they go back and forth in overtime, and uh, New Orleans takes it 31-27 to in the extra period of play. New Orleans looking to uh, clinch a playoff spot, and they are chasing the Birmingham Stallions in the South Division. So they had to keep up with them, and they needed this win. They squeak by the unlucky Panthers once again, 31-27. And in the first game on Sunday, the aforementioned Stallions do remain unbeaten. 7-0 taking care of the paltry, hapless 1-6 Pittsburgh Maulers. I don't know what Wayne Kirby is doing uh, as head coach. Pulls out badly, puts this brand new kid in at the end of the game. Um, they weren't going to come back anyway. It just, it just seems like whatever's going on in Pittsburgh, they need a change over there. Uh, you could see the frustration on some of the players' faces. I saw it personally down there on their sideline when I was down there for week three. Uh, nothing has changed. They did have a last-second win over Houston a couple of weeks ago, but they have just been playing very, very poorly, and uh, it showed really big time the difference between the Stallions and a team like the Maulers. Now, the Stallions, most Scarborough rushed for 100 yards. Um, this is not a superstar-laden team. This is just a team that plays well, gels well together, and uh, hence the reason why they're undefeated. So going into uh, the, 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 the stretch run, if you will, Birmingham looking good still at 7-0. and And in the final matchup of the weekend, the Philadelphia Stars have a huge fourth quarter score, 22 points, and their defense keeps Houston out of the end zone with a goose egg in the fourth quarter. They walk out of there with a 35-24 win over the Gamblers, who are just having a rough season. Only one win so far. Philadelphia remains in the playoff hunt, trailing the New Jersey Generals in the North Division. Um, Case Cookus, another big game. I mean, uh, you know, you got, you got to look at the Stars and you say they've they had some adversity, they had injuries, uh, especially at the quarterback position. But Cookus came in in that week three and he's really done well 163 yards passing and another touchdown their defense five sacks two forced fumbles and a safety so stars win again this time beating the one and six gamblers hey guys get your usfl coverage right here in muscle sport magazine go to musclesportmag.com slash store $32 a year, free shipping in the United States for a full year subscription. We will see you next week with USFL Extra Point.